This can be also uh, interpreted as a uh, sort of uh, 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 well-defined version of the Hawking integral. Each one of these objects can be interpreted as a, as a geometry. And most interesting, exactly this expression can be obtained um, as the Feynman expansion of an auxiliary field theory exactly the same way in which uh, uh, matrix models generate two-dimensional quantum gravity. Now, there is a generalization from three dimensions done by uh, Bullet of it to four dimensions done by Uguri of the matrix model, which gives an expression very similar to, uh, to that, uh, which is, can be re read as a quantization of BF theory. If you add to BF theories and constraints, that the constraints that transform it into generativity in the classical theory, um, and, and, and if you impose this constraint to the quantum theory, you transform Uguri theory exactly in this expression here. So, uh, in a sense, this is a, uh, Uguri's BF quantization plus the constraints that uh, transform uh, BF in generativity. There you have a single SU2 uh, 15J symbol. Here you have two because there is SO4 behind, in a, in a sense. Um, now, I have very little time, let me fly through some uh, physical applications. I just want to mention three, I guess. First, uh, loop cosmology is one of the main um, line of development uh, today. Uh, what is uh, interesting is that unlikely the Willard the wheat uh, uh, super, uh, mini, su mini superspace uh, uh, quantization that uh, is still singular at the t, t equals zero, if you start from the loop theory and you do a, a mini superspace quantization, what you find is that this singularity is removed, uh, in a sense, because there is no, uh, because the theory is non-local at, the, at a very short, uh, a very short scale, and in fact, the um, the uh, willard wheat equation can be continued the other side of the singularity. So you have a bounce, and this bounce is uh, is robust, robust is uh, is there both if you do. Um, uh, closed universe, open universe, uh, with cosmological constant, without cosmological constant, and uh, there's much activity going on in this uh, direction. There is an indication of an inflationary behavior at the beginning, the calculation of the um, uh, spectral index, uh, scale invariance, I'm not going into the detail. Um, a classical result in the theory a few years ago is regards to black hole. Uh, the entropy can be computed, it's finite, it's proportional to the area. The um, calculation can be done for physical black hole, Schwarzschild, care, and uh, the coefficients, one of the fourth, is obtained only uh, uh, adjusting a free parameter that floats around in the theory, which I'm happy to answer any question if you have a, a, about uh, it. What is most interesting in the, in the black hole um, uh, uh, physics, I think, is uh, what happened at R equals zero. There's a number of recent results indicating that also the R equals zero singularity is resolved exactly the way the cosmological singularity is resolved. There is a region in which space-time is not defined, is, 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 uh, is quantum, and then the uh, space-time can be continued so to the other side. Now, in the last minutes, I want to tell you about these uh, um, endpoint functions and low energy uh, limit of the theory. Um, uh, let me start from this. It's notoriously difficult to uh, define uh, endpoint functions in the case of diffeomorphism invariant theories. Essentially, x and y here are coordinates. So if the theory is invariant under coordinate transformation, it doesn't mean anything. Um, one way to go around it <coughs> is, uh, you see, one has to find a way to, find, uh, to, to, to fix a, a distance between x and y, the geometry here bring the geometry inside. So one way is to break this integral in the integral inside on the boundary and outside a given region in space-time, so a four-dimensional um, uh, finite region of space-time, and then replace the outside integration with a state and view this as depending on this state and choose this state as giving a geometry uh, to the boundary. So in this way one defines another object, which is a, an object which depends on x and y and the geometry on the boundary, uh, which is the right object in the diffeomorphism invariant theory that can be compared with a boundary, with a, a two-point function in this case of the background dependent theory. So what's going on physically here? Imagine that here at LHC you have a scattering um, uh, experiment. There's an, a, an interaction region, so it's a closed space-time region. You measure the fields corresponding to the particle going in and out, and you measure distances and time lapses around this region. 
Now, this is a field measurement. This is also a field measurement if you bring generativity in, because the, 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 uh, these are just measure of uh, uh, the text of gravitational field. So the only thing you want is the amplitude of, of the process at given values, boundary values of the fields. Now, you can use this logic within the theory. Um, find a way to fix the boundary states, uh, fix the geometry in terms of the boundary state, and use this to compute, for instance, the graviton-graviton two-point function, which is a, a certain um, well-defined uh, expression here. And uh, thank you. It turns out that in the limit, in the large distance limit, so when the, the, the boundary geometry is large compared to the Planck length, this is dominated by, just by the vertex, or more precisely by the asymptotic expansion of the vertex for large uh, J. So this is being computed. Um, there are a, uh, this is, there's a lot of activity trying to make this uh, precise, and this has been computed in some variants of the theory. There are preliminary results which give the free graviton propagator a three-point function, and hence Newton law, and some first-order corrections to the uh, free uh, graviton uh, propagator. Now, again, here there's a lot going on. I don't uh, go into any uh, detail. So let me summarize. Um, first of all, um, loop quantum gravity is a technique for defining the most invariant quantum field theory. It offers a new description of space and time by merging quantum field theory uh, with, diffeomorphism, with the diffeomorphism invariant introduced by uh, generativity. Now, the <coughs> theory defined here is substantially different than uh, most of the quantum field theory in which uh, we, 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 we know how to work. Notice there's no energy here. There's no momentum. There's no um, uh, natural definition of S matrix, nothing like that. Uh, the, the theory uh, lives only on the quantum state, on its own quantum, uh, quantum states. Um, there is a definition of a quantum theory of generativity plus the standard model in uh, uh, four dimensions. It's natural to valid finite, and it has, in the sense I've said, a discrete structure at the Planck scale. The application in cosmology, black hole physics, which I mentioned, astrophysics, which I did not mention, and uh, a, a, a way of addressing the problem of the black hole singularities and the uh, uh, cosmological singularities. Now, minuses and pluses, in my uh, opinion. First of all, if this is correct, well, of course, we don't know, um, there is nothing here related to the unification of forces, right? So the, the problem is not addressed at all. So uh, if, if this is correct, this is not in any sense uh, near the end of physics. Um, as I've hinted, that there are different definitions of the dynamics. The definition of the canonical and the covariant theory uh, are not being proved uh, uh, the same. Within each of the two, there are variants which are being uh, considered. And uh, these low energy calculations, which I mentioned, which I think are crucial to uh, uh, compare the theory with uh, generativity and therefore test its validity, are still very much in progress. Um, what are the pluses? First of all, it's a formulation of quantum gravity where the fundamental degrees of freedom are explicit. Um, the theory is fully consistent with today's physics, uh, simply so, because there is no special constraint on which uh, fields you have to add, uh, to put in, in the diffeomorphism invariant theory. And so, in particular, there is no need for high dimension and there is no need for supersymmetry. Um, some, I mean, there is some literature of the formulation of supersymmetric theories in this uh, language and even high dimensional theories in this language, but there is nothing that requires uh, them, which, of course, um, uh, you can view as a plus or a minus, in my opinion, until we actually see nature or LHC tell us differently. Uh, uh, this is, I, I still see this as a plus. And finally, the theory is, is, is consistent um, and is based on quantum mechanics and uh, uh, general activity key insights, which I think with the standard model are uh, still the uh, main uh, source of a reliable information we have about nature today. Thank you. Questions? So, Simon.